Not done one of these for a little while, I just want to talk about some books. And this video is sponsored by Curiosity Stream and Nebula. There is a whole bonus video associated with this one over on Nebula. Stick around to the end to find out what that's about. If people didn't see it, last week I made a video about the history of global warming, and after the amount of effort and energy that went into that, this week I'm just going to do something nice and chill, nice and easy. I'm going to talk about some books that I've been enjoying, and you might enjoy too, and maybe you want to give some as Christmas presents. I will leave links to all the books I talk about down there in the description. Those are affiliate links, so if you buy something from them, then I get a small kickback from it. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps me out. So I haven't done one of these videos for a while because I published a book earlier this year called Firmament and it turns out that when you are writing a book and getting it over the finish line and getting it published and seeing the reviews come in and doing the sort of promotion for it, I wanted nothing to do with books, the other books at that time. At least for me I was totally booked out and so there was a period of like six, eight months maybe where I just didn't have like an active book that I was reading which is the longest time that I've had that as an adult and I needed that time off. I think my brain was just saturated with books but I am very glad that I have come back to reading because over the past couple of months I've found some really really good and interesting books that you might like too. First of all Dominion by Tom Holland. You're gonna have to make do with this digital art because I lent my copy to a friend as soon as I finished it which is a very good sign. Dominion is a book about the history of Christianity and how it has impacted the West and the author makes the claim that it has a unique influence and does a lot of things that a lot of other religions don't in terms of its cultural impact and this is a subject that I am fascinated by and this is a book that I've kind of been looking for for quite a while and it hits the mark. It's very good, well researched, well written, recommendation. I will say that it is a meaty book. It's nearly 600 pages long, it's quite dense, and while it is very enjoyable to read, it's dense is probably the word. You do have to go back and look up some names because obviously there are so many people in this history, and I've found at least that I had to remind myself of some of the key players from time to time. So it's not a light, frothy book that you can read very easily, like by the side of a pool, although I did read a fair bit of this book on my honeymoon. I'll also say that the book makes a lot of claims about how unique Christianity is amongst the major religions uh, in terms of its cultural impact, and while the arguments within the book make sense and are self-contained, I think it's interesting what it doesn't mention and how it doesn't talk about any other religions and how they did things as well. So it's a slight shortcoming, but considering the breadth of the topic, I can understand why he didn't want to make it. Like a thousand pages long. Now for something completely different, The Colour of Magic by Terry Pratchett. This may surprise some of you, but this is actually the first Pratchett book I've ever read. There were plenty of kids who I knew when I was in school who read Pratchett and swore by it, and this is going to sound slightly strange, I am really enjoyed the book, but I'm really glad I didn't read it when I was a teenager. Terry Pratchett is a very funny, very clever writer. What I will say is that his style has a certain level of snark going through it. That I immediately identified in the people who I knew at school who read this stuff, I was like, ah, that explains it. That's why you turned out that way. I, I really, really enjoyed this. Again, I'm not putting the book down at all. I thought it was great. It's an easy recommendation, I think, for a lot of people. With the caveat that I'm glad I didn't read it when I was younger because I think it would have impacted my personality in a way that I wouldn't like. I don't know if that really makes any sense. I, I don't know if anyone in the comments wants to back me up here, but like I think this is a book that is best enjoyed by adults who have already kind of found their own voice in the world. To give you a skinny on it, this is the first entry in the Discworld series that introduces this idea of a fantasy world that is a disc with water flowing off of the edges, and um, you're following a few different characters, notably the wizard, wizard Wincewind? <laughs> the wizard Rincewind. The characters in this and the setting and I mean literally everything, like it is all incredibly creative, really enjoyable and as I've already said, very funny. I know there's an immediate sequel following the events of this book called Over the Edge, which I'm definitely going to be reading and I just know I'm going to be falling into the Discworld novels. So yeah, easy recommendation with that caveat of maybe this is something for kind of people in your 20s and 30s. I would hesitate to recommend this to like a 12 year old Simon. Read Douglas Adams instead. Completely shifting gears again, Our Biggest Experiment by Alice Bell was another book that I devoured this year. That name may be familiar to some of you who watched the video last week, that's because this book formed the foundation of the script of that video. This is a sweeping history of the climate crisis and the surrounding social and economic context of it. So this isn't just a story of people like Arrhenius and Calendar and Keeling, it's also how how electricity came about, you know, who discovered it, how did we electrify various systems, why was natural gas used for some systems but not electricity, why did we end up using coal, 
All those kinds of questions. As such, this is the Climate Crisis Plus. It's all the surrounding material, and it's very comprehensive in what it's trying to do, which is a plus point, I think. I'm all for a social and historical and scientific context, but I think it also counts as a negative in this case. While all the context is incredibly important to understand the climate crisis, I think that when you are trying to tell the story of the climate crisis, having too much of that material, whilst it is necessary, in this case at least, has kind of muddied the waters and it's obscured the, the story, for lack of a better word, of, of the climate crisis. If you're someone who is much more interested in the social background of, you know, how electrification came to happen and how the oil empires in America came to be and who financed them, then this is definitely a read that I would recommend. If you are after a book that is just about the discovery of global warming and the history of the theory, then I would much rather recommend The Discovery of Global Warming by Spencer R. Weird. Both of these were actually the, the key sources for last week's video script. And another book that was key to researching the video was Firmament, my book, and I'm mentioning this because it is coming out in North America next week. I think it's actually already available as an audiobook, which I narrated, sorry, but it's available in physical format in North America next week. And the reviews that have come in from not North America have been incredibly positive. I'm slightly blown away by the response to the book, like I've heard from some people that they're recommending it to their students in college, which is nuts. <laughs> I will say that it would make a good Christmas present for anyone who is interested in the climate crisis and how we know what we know about the atmosphere. Not just weather prediction or the climate, but the whole physical system. That's, that's what I wanted to do with this book. It's also an introductory book, it's not a textbook. It was written with high school students and college students in mind, so people who may be interested in going into atmospheric science. That was what I was trying to accomplish, at least, and I think, according to the reviews, I've managed it. So yeah, link to Firmament along with all the other books down in the description. In last week's video, I mentioned that if there was interest, I would do a part two about the events of the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and people are interested, so I can confirm that's going to happen. It'll be sometime in the new year, like in a, a couple of months' time, like maybe February. Give me a chance to write a script and make the video. But when that video does come, it's going to be largely inspired by Losing Earth by Nathaniel Rich. This was a book that I devoured. I started reading it and over the course of like an hour realised that I was going to finish this in a day. It's written like a thriller. It's really impressive. As the title suggests and with the context I've given you, this is about the 70s and 80s and 90s and how we went from the science being very well understood about the theory of global warming even if we didn't have a huge amount of data and not really much happening about that until kind of really the 2000s and 2010s. The most heartbreaking part about this book is that it makes it very clear that there was a very real possibility we could have taken action in the 90s or maybe even sooner. You know, the right people were in the right positions in the American government specifically and knew about the science, but they were stymied at every turn. And it's, ugh, yeah, it's a tough read sometimes. <laughs> very easy to read. There's not a huge amount of science in here. This is very much about people and politics, not about the science of the climate crisis. Highly recommend this to pretty much anyone, to be honest. Along with Merchants of Doubt by Oreskes and Conway. I've mentioned this book before, but taken together with this, these two provide a very good account of why we didn't do anything about the science. <sighs> However, if you prefer your grimdark future to be fictional, I'm just going to make a very quick mention of Armageddon by Aaron Dembski Bowden. This is a book published by the Black Library. It's about Warhammer 40,000. And fun fact, this was actually a copy that I bought for myself as a present when I was in Stockholm uh, visiting some friends. I'll be a, a card up here. You can watch the vlog about that trip. And this is one of the most famous books by the Black Library. And it's kind of clear why, because there's character progression. The Black Library publishes a lot of books. I'm just going to be honest. A lot of them aren't great. They're, they're not classic literature. <laughs> Armageddon is definitely a step above most of what the Black Library publishes. I think Aaron Dembski Bowden's a pretty solid author, and you actually get some progression in terms of characters and, and larger themes going on in the setting, which is much more ambitious than most authors try to do. So, full credit. I enjoyed it. I will say that it's not a masterpiece like some people hype it up to be. If you are interested in the story of this but you don't want to read the book, there is actually a fan-made film on YouTube by a guy called Richard Boylan, which is amazing. I actually think it's better than the book. It adds in a couple of things and takes a few things out that just enhances the overall story. So I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. Uh, it's a very visually striking fan project. Very, very cool probably watch that instead of reading the book. And then lastly, my most recent read, The Hollow Crown by Dan Jones. I actually finished this this week. This was 
excellent. It's an account of the Wars of the Roses and the period of time before and after that conflict. For those of you not familiar, the Wars of the Roses was a conflict in 15th century England between the houses of Lancaster and York that resulted in the death of King Richard III and the ascension to the throne of Henry VII, who became the first of the Tudor monarchs. It's actually the inspiration for Game of Thrones. We're taught in school that there was a bunch of conflicts between Richard III and Henry VII. Battle of Bosworth Fields happens in 1485 and the Tudors win. They go on to become this huge dynastic family and they seal the deal with a marriage between the two families. What this book makes it clear is that the history is much, much more interesting and way more complicated than that. This book starts with Henry V and I pretty much picks up straight after the Battle of Agincourt and uh, takes you right the way through the Tudor dynasty and how the Tudors kind of put their mark on history and how they were really, really good at propaganda and creating that story that I just told you. This is a work of narrative history, so it's uh, like it's telling you the story, you know, it's, it's not dramatizing it, like having lines for the king or the queen or whatever. It's just telling you what happened in the manner of a really, really good storyteller. Dan Jones, very, very impressive. I'm gonna be reading his back catalog after this. If you like history, if you like Game of Thrones, I don't think I can recommend this more highly. I thought this was just amazing. I devoured this in not very long at all. And that brings us up to the present. On my to read pile, I have a huge number of books, including some that I'm gonna be reading for a future project, but also a bunch that have been sat on my to read pile for way too long. I think these are probably the three that I'm gonna be reading next over Christmas. Um, in particular, I'm looking forward to The Anarchy based on the success of The Hollow Crown. Apparently I'm a sucker for punishment and just huge books. <laughs> and I've also heard good things about this by William McCaskill. So I'll be honest, am I going to read these books before, I don't know, something that I just see on the shelf in Waterstones and impulsively buy and immediately read? Probably not. So that's my recent reading and my near future reading. You may notice there's a whole heap more books behind me. There's more that you can't see down there and there's actually way more downstairs. And I thought that you might be interested in a bookshelf tour. So I've made that video over on Nebula. In that Nebula exclusive, I talk through the bookshelves and the stuff that's on them, books and a couple of other things, and make some recommendations based on the much larger collection that have not featured in videos yet. You can get access to this bookshelf tour at the link in the description. Anyone can watch one video a month on Nebula, but if, like over half a million users, you would like full access to a huge library of exclusive content from top educational YouTubers, the ability to download videos to watch when offline, and a viewing experience that involves no adverts, not even in the videos themselves, like this, then you can sign up at curiositystream.com slash Simon Clark. Signing up at that link also gets you access to CuriosityStream, which, if you don't know, is the best source of documentaries on the internet. Instead of watching the same show on Netflix over and over again, maybe you could learn about ancient cities rendered in 3D with Megopolis, or the Artemis mission, or about any number of subjects across the sciences and humanities. They've got stuff for adults and kids, perfect for rounding out your entertainment options. To get access to both CuriosityStream and Nebula for an entire year costs only $14.79, so just over a dollar a month for a more enjoyable version of YouTube and a comprehensive library of options to make your evening viewing smarter. That's curiositystream.com slash Simon Clark with thanks to CuriosityStream and Nebula for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope that you took some recommendations from this. Again, all the links are available down there in the description. Some of these would make great presents. I'd be happy to receive them if I hadn't already read them. Remember that Firmament is out in North America next week, and if you'd like to watch that bookshelf tour, then you know where to find it. Here's some recommended viewing from me next. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to the channel down here. And that just leaves me to say thank you very much again for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.